still talking about committee activities, our spotlight now falls on public accounts committee in the House of Representatives. Joining me on the program is the Chairman Public Accounts Committee, Oluwaleoke, representing Obukun Oriade Federal Constituency in Oshun State. Welcome to the Hello Chambers. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Why do MDAs fear the Public Accounts Committee that you chair? The fear from MDA uh, may stem from the fact that um, the committee is saddled with the responsibility to consider queries raised by the Auditor General of the Federation on the financials, on their records, on their on the expenditure incurred, whether it meets the requirements of the Constitution, of the Public Procurement Act, of the Financial Control Amendment Act, and of course the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Um, so that is the that is where the fear may come from but any mda that is hope and doing that is hope right we have no fear we have no fear what have been the achievements of your committee so far uh, yes it's uh, it's been very engaging and uh, interesting and the um, it's, we, sometimes we also get frustrated, but we're not giving up. We get frustrations from MDAs that uh, will write one, two, three times to seek extension of time, you know, and uh, the reason is simply not willing to come and appear before the committee. Uh, but so far, We've also made this engagement a learning curve, a learning process for MDA. We've made MDA to realize that the that this committee pack is not a committee to be feared or to be afraid of, but that it's a committee that hold them a duty of care. That it's a committee that showed them where gaps exist in the management of resources that the parliament and Nigerian people are put in their care. So um, it's been very, we made the committee very friendly to, to MDAs, you know. Your committee makes staggering discoveries involving alleged corruption on a daily basis. Does it just end there? Yes, one, we've um, been able to put MDAs on their toes that a time shall come to render accounts. We've also made committed MDAs to realize that it is a constitutional requirement for them to render accounts as at when due. And failure to do so may hand them sanctions because the Financial Control Management Act defines such act as gross misconduct. So, MDA is now unlike what we used to have, which Auditor General reported severally in 2014, 15, 16. Up to 2017 reports, the Auditor General lamented, you know, um, carelessness, you know, refusal of the agencies to render a kind of to NDO. But upon inaugurations of the Ninth Assembly, uh, my deputy brought a motion on the floor and they we secured the House mandate to investigate that matter. I'm happy to report to you that uh, we have about 95 reports, percent uh, rendition to the Auditor General of the Federation. And the General is very happy with this development. And so he's, he's been able to, you know, um, to stand up to his own responsibility save for the delay from the Akatan General of the Federation, whom, according to him, has no time limit when to render accounts to the General to enable him to finalize his work. But, like I've said, part of our achievement is that MDAs are now on their toes. And you can even see that NMPC itself, which over years, you know, has not been made, made account public, 
is forced you know to render accounts publicly to make the accounts public and i have before me here the, the audited accounts of um, of um, nmpc up to 2019 2014 to 2019 this is the, com the covering letter of the accounts of the nmpc which was not the case uh, before so both uh, MBAs that people were thinking were bigger than Nigeria or bigger than no, under my leadership, under the leadership of Speaker Benjamin and Mila, you have to render account as at Wendy. And that is the and that is the greatest achievement that we have. So rendition of account is one leg. Evaluation, examination of the contents is the second leg, which is more of what is a generous work before coming to lay his findings, if there are lacuna, if there are queries uh, before us. Yes, the parliament also under status inquiry also cross-check those accounts to see if there are gaps. And when there are gaps, we draw the attention of both the Auditor General of the Federation and the agencies involved to them. And we escalate such issues in our reports, which we are working on, which shall be laid on the floor. Do we have a bill to that effect? Yes, I'm working on that. I'm working on the, uh, the Public Accounts Tribunal. But the leadership of the proposed tribunal will still be appointed by the executive. You see, the, the issue is this. The, the um, audit bill which we worked on in the Eighth Assembly, which unfortunately was not assented by Mr. President, will have dealt with these issues. Okay? But now that we are back in the Ninth Assembly, we have also triggered the audit bill. We have revisited the audit bill. Uh, it's on board now. You know, uh, fortunately, our rules give us uh, windows, you know, uh, not to start the novo. You know, we can, we can kickstart where we ended, you know, most so that the bill had gone to uh, Mr. President for assent, it's not left for us to engage Attorney General of the Federation, to engage Head of Service, to engage the Academy General or the General to see what they are, if there are issues why Mr. President declined assent, so that we look at it, so that we're all on board, we engage them and uh, you know, represent the, the bill. Um, you know, to Mr. President for his assent. So that will be the first, if I mean, fastest I mean, track that will, will get us there. Otherwise, yes, we'll go by the way of the public, the public accounts tribunal. We'll, pre, we'll lay the bill and we'll see how we can also fast track the, its consideration of second reading and third reading. I mean, public hearing, third reading, and then we'll also get there. That's another call, you know. Away from your committee, tell us what have been the gains for your constituents with your representation. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I've had the privilege of being elected back to back um, um, from Egyptian North. And uh, over years, we've tried so many schemes, you know, high theirs and all that. But I can tell you now what is in the front burner now is just two things that work is empowerment and employment of the youths. You, you build houses, you build palaces, you build roads and all that. Empower the youths. Mm. They can also do the same for their, com for their communities. And that is what is key. And that is what I'm championing, I'm championing now, is employment. Employment of the youths, empowerment of the artisans, and that, that's, that's what is just key. Uh, that you are giving somebody money to eat, to you are buying somebody a car, you are buying somebody motorcycles and all that. Those things are subject to tear and wear, depreciation. They can have accidents. They, sometimes they end up becoming liabilities. But what <laughs> that cannot, in fact, that they will live on with infinitively is employment. You give somebody an employment, you'll be in service for 35 years or 40 years. Money can buy that, you know, or you empower an artisan. So what has been the feedback? The feedback is, is, is the result you get, and that's why you continue to see me here. <laughs> that is why you continue to win election. 
you know because our own approach is understanding what the constituent what they actually need it's not grandstanding or you know we bought people vehicles car motorcycles and at the end of the day it goes to nothing for example you buy a car of two million three million for one person when you have over ten thousand twenty thousand thirty thousand people voting for you is that one person going to buy be the best to buy you to, to to elect you no no but empowerment and employment go to a community take five six ten people give them employment and empowerment you see the, the outcome Thank you.